guess what was going through your mind there as PI, but you kept going. I guess what was going on there? Uh, honestly, you know, just the, just the extra effort. I seen the ball in the air, and even though the defender um, with the pass interference, I know the ball still ain't hit the ground, and I still had a chance to catch it. So just with the quick awareness, just turn around, look for the ball, track the ball. The things we be working on in practice and stuff, though. Is that the best moment you've had since uh, the Auburn touchdown? Nah, we had. Nah, <laughs> I had a lot of great moments, but uh, that that can be that can be up there though. You said stuff, the stuff you work on in practice. Do you really work on just playing through a penalty like that or something? Because most of us, we saw that flag. We're not even thinking about you catching the ball, and then all of a sudden you make the play. Uh, yeah, that, that's like something we do every day in practice. Um, you know, most people don't know we practice without refs, so there's no refs out there. You know, um, I tell the receivers, and the receivers tell me. We also go at the DBs, like, hey, man, man, practice like a game day. We got to compete, you know. And if the ball's in there, we still got to catch it. And the DB, our DBs make it harder than us in practice. And that's why we just got to come up with those type of catches. For both of you guys, the play that Holloway made, is that – I mean, a lot. Of, we don't know much about him, but I take it, is that not surprising? He's he's a pretty phenomenal athlete. You're not surprised he can make a play? Uh, I'm going to just say a little song. He go on the defensive side, but me going against Holloway, you know, he, he a very competitive guy, and he gave every, every amount of effort every time in practice. So I wasn't surprised. I knew somebody had to make a play and just, you know, he was the one. Yeah, piggyback off what he said, like seeing that guy in practice, he kind of work every day. You feel me? Work on his craft and come prepared and things like that. So it wasn't a surprise seeing that happen on the field today. Jamel, what was it like going against uh, Georgia Tech's quarterback King? I mean, he was mm -hmm. getting some big yards, some big plays, but he yeah. through the air as well. But you guys seemed to uh, tighten up when you needed to tighten up and make the plays mm -hmm. that you need to play. What was it like going against him? Yeah, uh, he's a very good player. We knew um, they was going to come in and try to run the ball. So uh, that was one of our keys to victory is stop the run. And uh, I think we did a good job of that. Uh, we know he's uh, he orchestrated the offense very well, and um, he's a very tough player. So we had to um, stop him and keep him from getting going and force them to pass the ball. I guess whether it was the, the scoop and score from Ramon or the 57-yard touchdown or the block, I mean, how much did those kind of clutch moments really fuel you guys in those moments where it seemed like Georgia Tech was kind of picking up momentum? Uh, uh, I think it was uh, it was very uh, momentum because it was uh, it was game changing, you know, um, keeping us in the game and putting us over top when needed and when things ain't going our way and we making plays like that. So I think that was very good for our team and those plays to be made to get us going, you know, in the right direction. What was the feeling on that goal line stop and and every, again really on third down to force that field goal, which was a big key. Making you know they moved the ball a lot, but you guys made big plays like that too in the second half. Yeah, you know. Uh, the drive wasn't going how we wanted, you know, at the um, but we still on the field. So it was very good for us to go out there and get the stop on the goal line, show how strong we were standing, you know, by them being that close to the end zone and still getting the stop, you know, um, and forcing the field goal, you know, three better than seven. So we'll take that as a defense. We got to thank our crowd too. Yeah. Thanks for it. Yeah. Yeah, the, the crowd was, it was really loud. You know, it had a tough time getting a call from the play. I'm like, you feel me, boy? It's loud out here, you know? <laughs> but it was good. You know, I ain't finna tell them turn it down, you know? Because at, at, um, at the same time, it's making it harder for them to uh, communicate, communicate and get their offense going. So I think that was very well. I don't know if either of you guys have experience playing at Notre Dame, but what does a win like this kind of do going into an environment like that where it's going to be loud and, you know, obviously Notre Dame has the history there with it? Um, you know, really we just got to, you know, put this win behind us and, you know, focus on what's important now, and that's the next win, and that's the, that's the next game. You know, we know Notre Dame's a great team, and we got to come out and have a great week of practice and, you know, just stack our days and be, be prepared. We know it's going to be a dog fight, and we're going we're gonna to come bring the smoke. Every week is to go one and zero, so that's the goal. You know, each week, you know, win, lose, or draw. Like you got another opponent next week, so it's like you know, you got 24 hours to you know embrace the the win for this game, and next thing you know, we on the Notre Dame moving forward, and that's how you gotta have the mindset for the whole season, knowing 
each week, you know, the opponent bringing their A game. So you got to be on top of yours. I appreciate it.